Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a game I played on the 19th of January 2023. And I believe I won this game because I am playing with. Let me just, let me just check. Um, so I'm playing with black and I do win this game. Uh, the ending's a little bit hard to follow, I think, because um, there's quite a lot of ideas there. Also, there's a little bit of um, mis miscommunication with some of what I, what I wrote down and what I have played. So I hopefully have the correct move done. If not, then I will. I mean, I, I will check with uh, the other person. But if, if I've done the wrong move order, then that's my fault. But I'm going to analyse as I think it should be played. There's only one or two moves that I've that I'm not 100 percent accurate. But otherwise, it should be fine. Uh, E4 to start off with, now uh, we go to Sicilian and we go with the Boggler attack which is Bishop to C4. It's not fully, it's not like, a, it's not, it's like what you play as a beginner against the Sicilian because yeah they're developing the pieces. It's not the best move and um, usually um, why would I ever want to play uh, F3 going for like a Dragon or a, a um, Nidorf or possibly uh, C, 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 C3. Uh, for the Alabin. Um the so the, this this uh, light chest does give some uh, commentary on the moves in this opening. Uh, knight c6 is played, very common in the Sicilian. Knight f3, b6. Now, here's the first. I I, not, I don't even want to call it an inaccuracy. But it is an inaccuracy. So, but um, the idea is to develop the bishop onto b b7. Uh, because pushing the center now is quite difficult because you have lots, the white has lots of pieces there. So you, uh, now, now the idea for black is to be kept, being kept in the bishop. Um, also, another idea could be uh, e, e6 and d5 and kicking the bishop away. Um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to read at the, the game because it's only just opening. Knight c3, yeah, good idea. Kind of getting the whole grip on the position. e6, um, as, as I said. Uh, d3, idea is to open up the bishop. Um, yeah, it wasn't actually the best move in this position. It's very interesting the opening, if, uh, if you take a look at it. So, uh, in, instead of playing d3, what could one play is d4? Um, kind of solid, solid, solidifying the center. And if black were to take, you have a very similar um, idea here where you take back and you can also have uh, a queen in the centre and nothing can attack it so it, it looks quite nice for white if um, white pushes but instead it goes for quite a passive move d3 uh, wanting to develop the bishop but the uh, kind of blocking this bishop that in yeah like with the, like I said being free and kettered bishop f4 uh, the idea of bishop f4 is just to develop the bishop. Uh, if you want to castle kingside, you can. Also, moving the queen, that allows now castle queenside, queenside as well. And also, this now blocks uh, black's queenside castling. Uh, a6, very passive, I think, um, where the idea is to play b5 and kick the bishop away. And then, if the bishop were to retreat to b3, then you could then you could possibly possibly play um, c4 if. Um, F D D three wasn't here, and I'd trap the bishop. But since D three is here, you could then do this trade off pieces, and then Black would be down the pawn. Uh, short side short side castling and B five, kicking the bishop. Uh, knight to D four. The idea is to attack the bishop and kind of create some powerful attacks uh, on on mostly on the white side of the board, wanting to get space. Um, it would have, it would have been more accurate to play knight a5, and um, just because it, it, it now opens, it does allow the bishop to be open. Also, does attack the bishop. Now, but this bishop is kind of trapped. You, it, if you take away the knight, it's an equal equal, equal trade. Like but before, but, uh, for example, rook e1 and bishop e7, you just you just got to go off like this. And once you do trade, you'd open up the rook, but for double pawns, it's very 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 difficult to read. Uh, rookie one is played. Knight d4, and 
Actually, that's a quite inaccurate move according to the computer. Uh, knight taking would have been better. Now if a C takes knight e2 and then just developing uh, with this kind of... Uh, this is this is better for white, I believe. Yeah, this is plus two. Um, it doesn't look it doesn't look all that bad, but if you take a look at the pawn structure, um, these these pawns are kind of part, both of these are kind of past pawns, kind of. This one isn't sorry. This one this one's not a past pawn. These are like very confusing. It's a very confusing pawn structure. Um, and while both sides all have still have the pawns, it's better for white because white has more kind of development, um, whereas black is kind of has to castle. Uh, it's quite difficult play I think for black that's why that's why that's why I kind of didn't want to didn't want white to do this um yeah but yeah it did, didn't really happen bishop e7 just develop developing move pretty much you, you don't want to do, go here because it loses the bishop bishop e5 idea to attack the knight with two pieces so if you do take back with the pawn then the pawn gets taken knight takes b3 as I said Opening up the bishop, uh, opening up the rook for double pawns. He takes b3, knight f6, and now white can take. It's not too bad. It does. It does make good to give black a powerful bishop on the long diagonal, but otherwise it's fine. Uh, d4 uh, should have been played earlier. Now it's a kind of a slow move because we moved twice with that pawn. And d6 now kicking the bishop away. What would have been better is to take first, and if the queen takes, and you can go d6 now. And then now the bishop would have to move out of the way. Because uh, if takes and takes, yeah, now you're attacking the queen, you're attacking the knight, it's quite bad for white. Yes, uh, so d6 is played and bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6. Um, yeah. d takes e5. d takes e5. Now queens can see each other. Uh, kind of, it's kind of creating tension between the two pieces. Um, bishop can see the knight. But it doesn't really, it's not really that bad for now because you can just take a knight and still keep your double pawns. Um, so yeah. E5 is played, attacking the bishop, you can't take it because it's protected by the rook and then knight. Uh, queen takes d1, very interesting move. Rook takes, rook a takes d1, and bishop takes f3. Now here the notation went a little bit foggy, or um, basically after, after this move, I wasn't sure what was played because it wasn't written down and I'm, I'm assuming this was played g takes f3 and the reason is because yeah this seems not the most natural move to play you don't, you don't want to be down a whole bishop um, another possible move uh, for black in that case instead of taking the knight it would have been bishop e7 and wanting to, to expand on the queen side with the pawns so yeah um, g takes f3 bishop e7 uh, now I accidentally wrote these moves in the wrong column, so I wrote this move for white and then the next move for black and so on for a couple of moves, and it went a little bit strange. Knight e4. This is this is this is what I wrote down for black, but I remember it's now white's turn and castles. Um, yeah, and rook d7. Now I, I thought yeah this is probably correct uh, after rook f8. It makes it makes the most sense as to what was written down. Uh, rook a7 could have also been played in this case and you now looking possibly to trade off rooks on the default um, but that does open king so it's a little bit dubious. Um, yeah it can be quite dangerous. Um, yeah, for, for example if this happens um, you actually want to move the king you don't want to take here just because you get um, white gets a nice rook on the open file and king f8 uh, and so on and basically what, 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 what's white what, what, what white's trying to do is get the open file and then go possibly here attacks the rook and the bishop with a nice fork it's very very very, very difficult position uh, it is it is actually equal um, in terms of attacking jumps but it's probably because this king is open um, so then there's, you can't defend with pawns that's probably why King safety. Both because both both sides have a kind of strong centre. White pieces are slightly more active, but white has a weak white weaker king. So yeah, uh, rook e7 is played in the game, and rook f8 basically protecting the bishop. And I, I probably should have moved the bishop uh, possibly to here. 
could have been a good move. Or back onto d8. But instead, I protect it with the rook, and back to d6, attack the rook. Now it's uh, pretty much the only, well, not the only move, but I could have also played this nice really cool pinning move. Basically, then it forced White to trade up rooks. Um, but for, for example, if um, if White played rook, knight takes, I can then take the rook, <coughs> and then it, then it'll be even material. So it's very very. I didn't, I didn't see that though. In the, in the game I saw knight attacks rook, I have to move rook or take knight. So I take knight. Uh, King g2 is actually a better move for white in this case. And you're thinking, what, why, why is it better? It doesn't, it's not attacking, it's not powerful. It's, it's, um, I, I, the reason why is because now um, uh, after these trades, what now black's king is also weak and since white has better development, White's winning, and also now the king's more active because now the king can just come up here, start attacking. That's probably why the, the computer thinks it's better. Yeah, but uh, so what was played is knight d6, and bishop takes, and rook takes, and now uh, rook to e, rook e to d8. And now uh, this is actually what made when made the most sense. Now, now from here it's all it's all correct. Um, but yeah, up to the up from like the last five moves, yeah, it wasn't. 100% sure uh, what was fitting where, but it, it, to this to this position, I rem I rem remember this position and the probably my draw of the end game, so I remember the, up this up to this point was correct. Rook d8 and rook e d1, and basically you want him to sit down to get black to trade off the rooks, uh, so you can get a powerful rook, and also threaten checkmate on the back rank, and did this this forms now a weakness for black. Since the rook has to stay behind it to protect it, and your rook is free to move wherever you want. Yeah, so very, very, very poor position for all black. It's actually equal, but it looked quite poor to play. Uh, rook C, rook D to C8. Um, just yeah, just moving out of the way. And also, if you uh, if you if it stayed down, play silly move like A4. Yeah, you're getting checkmated. Uh, so rook c8, uh, so rook d8, and rook b6, wanting to get both the rooks on the sixth rank. And c4 is played. B4 basically you don't want to take because then a the rook can come down or b or I mean you don't, you don't take the pawn because you get isolated pawns. Yeah, so you don't want what black to rook to come in the game. So you, um, white played b4, c3, and b3. Basically now this pawn's kind of weakness for black because it's stuck behind pawns. It can't. It could take anything, but it can't move forward to promote. So it's very interesting. Um, except, yeah, but White's got two double sets of double pawns. But White is slightly better um, in terms of yeah development and the attacking chances. Um, and these pawn, this this pawn can't really move because it can be taken. Uh, so then these these two, these two are the only ones that can move. And while while the pawn structure does look quite bad for White, uh, yeah, White's winning. <laughs> Because uh, of the rooks, really powerful. These rooks are kind of behind pawns, so they won't be doing anything soon. Uh, H six is played to stop any back rank checkmates. It would have been better to play G five um, again, stopping black back rank checkmates. But the reason is because it's more potent. As I would say, it's potent. It allows the king to move up after king G two, king G seven. Now you can see the king has lots of places it can go. It can attack, it can attack the pawn. Now black, now white has to play defensively as well. And this pawn can't defend because it can be taken. So it's a very nice position for black. It's still it's still actually winning for white, uh, but it looks hard, really hard to play. Um, so after h6 is played, rook d to d6. Again, doubling rooks on the sixth rank. h5. Now you might be thinking, you just played h6, why play h5? Why not, <laughs> really? Uh, was it kind of a mistake? Um, because the, comp the computer doesn't like it because it goes from negative 0 0.4 to plus 1.2 uh, plus plus 2 and actually it's really interesting this, this move from white is a mistake even though it looks really good um, it doesn't achieve anything because now black can just push pawns and yep as you can see push pawns are powerful you know, it's got, got some uh, nice alliteration there push pawns are powerful uh, but h5 now goes back to white winning. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, okay, really interesting with H4, H5, H, sorry, H6, H5. Uh, it wouldn't be better to play A5 here, as you can see, Rook takes, and then takes, takes, and then the Rook could have to go back and defend, uh, because now this Rook is really powerful, can it check on the back rank? And now it will come after these spawns. Yum, yum, yum. So after H5, Rook takes A6, very, very simple, and you win a pawn. After Rook takes, Rook takes, H4 is played. Marching the pawn up the board, wanting to black block this pawn for black's king. So black plays king f king f1. Uh, the reason is to stop any back rank mates, because uh, if black had said that, then this rook could have could have potentially come down and checkmated, but that probably wouldn't have happened. Um, rook d8, yeah, looking for a nice check. Would have would have been more accurate to play king h7, uh, and then basically just king march down the board. Uh, for some reason, moving the king down the board is really powerful, like interesting, because the king can't. It isn't. It can be aggressive with the king, but the king can't win. You can't win with just the king. Yeah, so it's a really, really interesting way of playing, just jumping the king down the board. Uh, you have rook d6, wanting to trade of rooks, and that's actually what happens. Rook takes and rook takes. Uh, it would have been better to play rook a8, wanting to go for this check on a1. Uh, but then, yeah, it's quite difficult to play actually, it's plus 2.5 now. Because uh, this, this pawn can now, can now can quite easily be taken. You can't really defend with this check. Because after this check and the king moves, you have to go back and wherever you go, the pawn, the black, white takes the pawn and defends their pawns and you can't take any other pawns. Very, very simple play. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the idea there. But rook takes and e takes d6. And now white is winning, it's plus 5, I think. The computer says plus 3.5. But it's, it's much, it's much, uh, plus 4, there you go. Uh, on, on a high depth, plus, plus 5, plus 6 now. Uh, it's, it's basically, if, if black doesn't do anything, this pawn's promoting. So king f8, of course, for example. King e2, king e6, king e3. Um, yeah. King d7, king takes d3, and king takes d6. And now this is pretty much just winning for white. As long as white does not make any blunders, uh, they can pro quite easily promote these pawns. Uh, or these pawns, I don't know, something like that. King d4. The idea is to get opposition. Um, it, you know opposition when you have pawn in games, it can be really powerful depending on who has the opposition. Opposite, the person who has opposition would usually win or draw, depending on what type of endgame it would be. F5 is played. Uh, yeah, this goes up to plus 8, nearly plus 9. Wow, okay. C4. And the, the idea of C4 is to open up this file for the pawns to move down. And if takes, takes, uh, um, basically down. Now these pawns are double. Like for, for instance, if uh, black were to take and take back here. Then these pawns are basically connected past pawns, and the king can't defend against those. So yeah. However, I play e5 check, and this is I think this is like the first check in the game. Very very silly. It's a very very silly game. Um, yeah, but b takes uh, no so e5 check, and king c3, and this is a mistake. It goes from plus eight plus nine nearly to zero. So now equal. It's because and the black can now defend basically, that's, that's, that's the reason why. Um, it wouldn't be better to take play, uh, so it would have been better to play king to e3 uh, just to stop these pawns from promoting. Though it does, and since these pawns are connected, the king can't come here. So it's a very, 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 very strong um, position that white has. Yeah, but yeah, king c3 and now in this position, and in this position, I take b takes e4, and king takes e4. And now, since taking was so much of a mistake, I should have played king to c5, uh, so king to c6. Uh, basically, just to protect my pawns. And if takes, then white, white, white has triple pawns. Yeah, you don't want to play triple pawns. It's very, very, very weak um, pawn structure. Pawn structure. Yes, uh, king c3. Takes takes and now it's plus four again. White can no, sorry plus eight again, and white can win. G5, wanting to push these pawns. K 
option B5, going from plus 10 or plus 9, 9.5 to negative 6.3. Very powerful move. Uh, would have been better to play B, B5 there. Uh, sorry, would, would have been better to play. Yeah, B5. Uh, it, it says B5. And now, now we can't really stop this form promoting. Can't. Uh, I mean, the idea after B5, you got E4 um, in this line. This line. Uh, so can, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show the line. Uh, I won't talk about it. I'm actually quite obvious what's happening. Um, white blacks going for pawn breaks, and since and now basically blacks, well, sorry, white's going to win because if takes and and this pawn's pushed now, now white can just go go after it, and white can't defend against three pass pawns. It's a very simple chess. Three pass pawns is a win pretty much because uh, even even if black goes for a pawn, the other pawn is just going to go down the board. So that's that's that, that's the line that could have been played. Uh, however, yeah, King um, King B5 is played, uh, and G4, and it goes back to it goes back to plus 11 because I played the wrong move. Instead of G4, I should have played E4 and E4 and F takes F and um, F4. Now there's a difference to the other slot pawn factor we had uh, in the other um, line because now Black's looking to push these pawns and. E5 check doesn't matter. Black takes H3 doesn't matter. Black plays G4. H takes G4 and the pawn's now going to promote H3, King C4, H2, King C5 and Queen and Black's one. It's a mate in, mate in ten. Oh, wow, very interesting. But G4 is played. It goes up from negative at seven to plus twelve, and F takes goes to plus three, plus eight. So plus eight plus. 16 plus 19. Oh wow, always looks like it could be mate actually. Could be mate. The computer says plus 54, so uh, I'm guessing it's probably a mate somewhere. Hasn't found it yet though. Yeah, but it was such a mistake to play. Um, to, I mean, I could, I should have resigned it um, actually, but I, I, mean, I, I don't, of course, I'm, I'm a beginner, I don't know how pawn angles work. I thought this was winning for, for black because of double pawns and the king's behind the pawn, in front of the pawns. So I thought this was winning for black. And f takes g4, king a6, and now white white blunders from possible possible checkmate. Uh, so plus 56 to king a8, zero. Um, it would have been better to play king c4 and just push the pawns because even if the king tries to protect them, uh, they're just going to keep going. It's not, they're not going to stop. And also, what could potentially get oppos op opposition again? Um, yeah, but after King A6, now it's the draw and King to C7. And the idea behind King to C7 is now the King's kind of stuck on the, the A A file because um, going up, yeah, pretty much White has to move up and down. King A7, King C6, King A6, King C7, and so on. However, yeah, there's a photo mistake that White makes. Um, but basically, if you go down here, then um, Black's just gonna a could push pawns, and these pawns could promote because it looks quite dangerous now. And if you don't get off the A file, uh, so if you don't, if you can, you can keep repeating moves, of course. Um, after after keep, you just keep repeating moves, and it's, it would be a draw. However, the mistake King B five negative forty two. So that's nearly a change. That's actually about a change in a hundred, rate a hundred points of material in about two moves, not two moves, about five moves. Very, very, very cool. The idea is to come and chase the pawns. However, after e4, king c4, e3, black and um, white was um, wanting to uh, come and uh, take the pawns. And if you're taken here, let's say, then this is this is this is dangerous. You can't defend against this. It's, but that black's queening and it's checkmate in a couple of moves. And if as played in the game, King D3, wow, you can. And you thought, mm, no, no, I can't go there. The, the king's protecting. F2, King, um, E takes F2, King E2. And now you're thinking, but then now, now, now what happens here? Isn't this losing? And actually, this, I believe this is where my opponent resigned. 
after the move, e takes f2. So this is e, after e takes f2, my opponent was out because you can't. There's no overstep in the pawn. You're thinking, yeah, you can go here, can't you? And now if you if you're you can just take. Yeah, very simple, right? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll show you the end as it could have been played. Um, by the way, it's a negative 55. Uh, so, yeah, this gives me an idea of who's winning. Uh, after king e2, you're thinking now, but now the pawn's going to be taken, right? Uh, no, g3. And now you're thinking, but I can stop stop the protection with that h takes g3. Well, h takes g3 then. Haha. <laughs> uh, and now this king's going to be stuck. Either guarding these two pawns or going here. Uh, so, king f1, and the king's now going to come down and gobble, 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 pac man, pac man king, and the king can come down. And now in this position, king e2, and you just have to play a waiting move, king c3, king back to f f1, and king to d2. And now the king can't move back to e2, uh, so the king has to play. Uh, actually, um, um, in certain positions, like if black had pushed the pawn onto g2, now white it would have been a draw, so that would have been, been silly, silly to play. But after this position, now black, uh, the white's only move is to play king g2, and now we play king e2. And I'm thinking, but doesn't that lose a pawn? Oh, yes, it does. But if, if king takes g3, uh, you can get a queen, you can make your queen, and yeah, it's mating. I'll, I'll let you find the mating 5 uh, for black. Uh, king, um, queen f6, king h5, and king e3, you just march the king up, king d4, queen check, uh, you have to go back onto the back bank because any, all of these protected, all these, these squares are protected, so you have to move to the back and go here, anywhere you go, it's checkmate, uh, and if you want to the other side, it will be checkmate here. Yeah, so really well, get, well, really well played by by my by my opponent until I think I think with arrogance here. Yeah, I think I think basically what, what happened is I, I asked here, in this position here, or, or in, I said it's a draw. Um, neither of us is going to win. <coughs> and he said, um, yeah, but just look at my king. My my king's going to be so powerful. I'm going to walk down the board and take all your pawns. Yeah, no, it didn't happen. He didn't see. He didn't realize um, my potential danger of these pawns. Even even if they are, even if it's like isolated pawns, you get isolated. To, yeah, I mean, white type of pawn in this position. These these this pawns are isolated, and this is just nice. No, it's, it's just quite a nice pawn structure because um, it's pawn island, and white's got three sets of isolated pawns. Ugh, and these are doubled as well, so it's very very difficult to play. But uh, very very well played to my opponent. Uh, if this was correct set, uh, setup, of course, I I, I possibly make mistakes. Uh, I did with the writing. Yeah, but yeah, I think the takeaway is even if the position is equal or very close to being equal, it's to do with the pawns, the pawn structure, and of what, um, yeah, it's to do with the pawn structure, and pretty much the pawn structure kind of determined the game, kind of, uh, well, until the end, of course, but then it caused it back then again, didn't it? Yeah, so it's pretty much. Once the piece is ready off, you just have to look at the pawns to see who's winning. Um, any other takeaways? Don't trade randomly, don't play silly moves, don't blunder your pieces. Um, I don't know. Be careful of what you play, maybe. Be more considerate of what your opponent can do. Uh, yeah. I think the opening did go quite well, though. Um, well, let's see, let's take the opening to its extent. Yeah, I think, uh, let's let's go for a check on the opening. Yeah, I think I played the opening fairly decently until my mistake with, let me just check, this was a mistake. Yeah, until this mistake, I should have just developed pieces because um, that, that would that would have been winning. Um, well, it's only very slightly, but it would have been winning. Or I could have also attacked the bishop this way. But going to the center too early, because it, it looks like an outpost, but it's not an outpost because a knight can take. So yeah. So yeah. Um, well, thanks you guys for catching up with me again. This was actually the first game I played in the season. Uh, so yeah, on the nineteenth I played the first game in the season. But then there's also uh, this is now probably going to be the P. I forgot the word, what's the word's called. Is it? It's this game's going to be the game before. 
that this this sorry this video is going to be the final video before the the final one that comes out next week because uh, next sorry, this week Thursday is the last game of the season. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, well, anyway, I, I will. I will also cover other seasons, previous seasons I played. Uh, they won't be as good chess, of course, because I always get better. Well, I don't always get better, but it's, uh, as you can see, I've made a lot less blunder this season. Um, also, in terms of winning, I've actually won significantly more games than I haven't done in previous seasons. Uh, probably because a my opponent rating is slightly lower, but then I could have just got better. So yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, but that was a really good game from my opponent. I liked it. Um, what's the word? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, and do whatever, you want, whatever else you do with my videos. And also, um, I could cover some other things, but I won't. Thanks for watching. Bye.